the episode four, and yes, TG Retro Gamers. Hello, everybody. I'm Michael Langevier. I am racing um, a Toyota today. A Toyota? No, no, it's got to be the Delta Lancia. Lancia Delta. That's the one. Yeah, it's yeah. One with a Toyota. He's going with a Lancia Delta. It's one of two choices. That can only be one thing. What game are we playing today? We're playing Sega Rally. Exactly. The Sega Saturn. The, yes, yes. Do you like this game? Huh? Do you like this game? I did like this game. Really? I like this game a lot. Yes, I did. Mm. And now, being a, a budding Sega gamer, uh, back in my day, you know, you had Ridge Racer on the PlayStation 1. Mm -hmm. you know, it was doing its thing. You had um, Club Drive on the Jaguar. Virtual <laughs> Straws. Virtual Racing on 32X. You had uh, Sega Rally for Saturn. Mm. Now, it was the flagship racer for the machine. And I feel that this actually was a fantastic game. Yeah. Whether it's aged today is a different matter, which we're going to look into. Um, now, I feel that uh, for this episode, I'm failing to get into first place for Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> Driving a Toyota <laughs> or Lancia yeah. Michael and that's two choices, that's all I got. Prius me machine might hang a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right, so Sega Rally Championship, okay? Multiple versions of this game were released throughout the Saturn's lifespan, very short lifespan for that. You had yeah. the arcade game, which was originally 1994. Four, that's right. Uh, you had December 1995, which brought the Saturn uh, that's right. Rally to the game. Uh, you had 1997, which brought the PC version PC. of the game. Who was uh, that? No, I've talking about it then. No. Um, but you had in 1996, which bookmarked the releases of this game, the Netlink version of this, which allowed you to play online against other gamers in 1996. My God! Wow! So you I could say other players driving the same car as you. One of two choices. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the Net version of the game. Ah, really? Using the X Band by Sega. Yeah, which would go. Well, plunked into the back there where I actually play currently sits. Well, let's, let's play some people online. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's <laughs> have our 12 kilobytes per second <laughs> modem <laughs> for Saturn. No. Anyway, right, so we've got a game which uh, was heralded as the racer to have on the Saturn. That's right, yeah. Now, this was a fantastic game. Some might say it still is a fantastic game. Perhaps it hasn't aged that well, to be honest. Graphically, it's looking maybe a little bit crummy. Yeah. The textures are a little bit worn. Um, but back then, though, when I, you know, when, I, when I first played it, I thought it was amazing. I thought those cars actually looked like cars. Yeah. I was very impressed. Yeah, rather than sort of Minecraft creations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, as Mike said there, you, you have a very limited choice of cars that you can use, too, to be honest. Uh, you can use the uh, Lancia Delta uh, HF, or you can use the Celica GT4. Mm -hmm. I believe that there was the option to unlock the Stratus HF on this, yeah. um, which you don't get initially, and you'll get that later on in the game, presumably through progression. No, yeah, you've got to uh, uh, win in first place in Lakeside. In Lakeside? Which okay. I can't see on here. Yeah, which isn't there. Maybe it's in the Championship. Maybe. Yeah. So we've got desert, desert, forest and mountain, so different terrains. You have a countdown timer, which is timing you throughout everything you do on this, yeah. even on the main menu. Yeah. Um, so you've got to be very quick with what you're doing. Perhaps the easy desert mode would be the best way for us to go at this moment in time. Turns out, it looks like we're going to go for the expert mode. So Mike's brave or stupid, one of the two, maybe both. Maybe both. <laughs> <laughs> maybe both. So we're um, in the 1995 Sega Rally Championship. Um, 1995. Spire Scars went around by then, so that's all good, isn't it? For some reason, it's, uh, it's the middle button B to. Um... Well, I'd, I'd expect that. I expect the A to break, the B button to go. I'm not too sure Whoa. about your blue roads. But, oh, um, yeah, very weird. You know, it, it, it's doing 3D alright for 1995. Do you not think? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the one I did before this was the medium one. Right, okay. Uh, it was a forest. Uh, very, very tough. I found myself getting a little bit angry, especially when they knock you out of the way like that. Yeah. Now, I, sort of I can imagine that the um, the developers behind Colin McRae Rally, Codemasters, were quite influenced by this game. Oh, yeah. Um, and that game came out for the PS1. 
Uh, now that game's a lot easier and um, not quite as arcadey as this game. Now this game's very unforgiving, you've got to really get ahead of the competition to be able to get anywhere near any victory on this. Yeah, you've got to get ahead of the other car, which um, as you can see, it's got sort of a shoebox floating like mentality yeah. to it. What's that, yeah. micro machines, game masters? One little bump into the side and you feel yourself falling behind. Well, wow, one little bump, boy, you've had a few there, haven't you? Yeah. The Quite crowd, a few. crowd don't seem to care though, they're static in 2D there. Uh, <laughs> now, as we look around, we've got an aggressive pop up on this game. Everything seems to be popping up, um, everything, you, you haven't really got sort of a bilineal filter on the game, which allows you to progressively allow the graphics to come into the game, which something was perfected later with the Dreamcast and PlayStation 2 and things like that. The 32 bit era of consoles, the PlayStation 1 went to some lengths to make a more convincing game world for the player. The Saturn Sadly being very underpowered that it was, it was rushed to the market back in 1995. Uh, and had two 2D processors that were working in tandem together to make a 3D game world, which as you can see doesn't really quite work out for it in the conventional sense. It certainly doesn't age it very well in 2017. Um, you know, that mountain just appeared out of nowhere there. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, I can only imagine what it would be like playing this online. But all the same, I have fond memories of playing this game as a younger teenager. I mean, I didn't get my Saturn until I was about sort of 12 years old. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I have fond memories of playing Sega Rally, Man's TT, Daytona USA. There are a fair few racing games that were out for the system at the time. And yeah, the, some of them did a better job than others. Sega Rally, if you could bear the handling of the game, actually turned out to be a very, very enjoyable title. And um, you could get, you could make headway with it, certainly. Um, How long do you think we can play this for? With uh, the, the three levels and... Just well, just don't forget, boy, that CD get base games back in sort of 1995 were showing graphically what a system could do rather than sort of the gameplay of it. Um, so yeah, although the gameplay is way for thin, um, yeah, I think graphically that's pretty good. I thought it was amazing. I, I think I played this when I was about ten. Yeah, and yeah, I loved it. I thought it was I thought it was brilliant. Obviously, I was a little bit disappointed when you know, I played both guys. Okay. Hey. hey. So that's me. take the competition which came out a little bit later, Colin McRae Rally, on the PlayStation One. Do you mm -hmm. feel that that moved the rally genre? Definitely, further. definitely. Yeah. But everywhere has a starting point and this was it for rally games. Well this was a Japanese company that were making a rally game, something that was very taboo in Japan anyway. Yeah, yeah. That you didn't get rally games made by Japanese companies before this point anyway. So when Codemasters came along later in the 90s with Colin McRae Rally, they're an English company. Stand up a minute. <laughs> Colin McRae, um, you know, from this side of the pond. And yeah, of course you were going to get better attention to detail, you're going to have more cars, you're going to have English cars for a start as well, yeah. um, and more tracks and more content. So these guys were looking at Sega Rally, which was the, the forebear of everything. You know, this console, I think, pushed things in the direction that things were going to go. Oh yeah. You know, the Saturn is often given bad press for Always. how the games were very, um, you know, very linear, they were arcadey, there wasn't really a dedicated home base game for the for the, the Saturn itself, mm. whereas PlayStation One had games that tailor made for the hardware rather than the arcade hardware. Now, but the, the, it all has come somewhere. I think the Saturn really did help that. Now, this game shifted 1.2 million copies across wow. the globe, so that's quite good for the Saturn's install base, really which is probably around about 10 million by the time everything was said and done. Mm. So, yeah, the, the, that's a tenth of the Saturn ownership uh, owner base that actually bought this game. Mm. That's good. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. And, um, you know, reviewing this game, Next Gen Magazine gave it a 5 out of 5. Sega Saturn Magazine naturally gave it 97%. Uh, this is based on retro, retrospective reviews. Mm. Um, whether it's like that today, I don't know. You can use the Saturn steering wheel to play this game, which makes it slightly easier. Um, I say slightly easier, because it's still a very, very difficult master. Yeah. I mean, it's very difficult to see what's going on in there. In the foreground there, these purple vehicles. I suppose there. it is easy to do it with the screen like that. Obviously, it was a uh, first-person driving. You were, yeah. Uh, very difficult to control. 
Um, I mean, you touched on uh, you know how how the Saturn got bad reviews and, and bad press. Oh, it did, yeah. I mean, it was a massive step up for Sega from cartridge straight to CD. I found. Well, I mean, don't forget they had the, the Mega, Mega CD. CD yeah, yeah, sure, but um, it was still six, sixteen bit. Yeah, and the thirty two X, you know, didn't take advantage of the fact that they had thirty two bit technology and they yeah, still yeah. stuck with cartridges at the time, mm. which um, you know didn't help them at all. Now you've got generic cars on the track here. It's got shades of virtual racing for me. You know these boxy vehicles. Oh, yeah. um, you know the licensing for the car seems to extend as far as the one you're driving. Helicopter going across the top there. Shades of Ridge Racer. Mm -hmm. The dust coming from it as well. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I think. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's a. Uh, it's still a very well polished game, gameplay wise. Graphically, yes, it's slightly let down. Sega Rally 2 Championship on Dreamcast was perhaps a step up from this. It had lots more content, but we're talking, you know, a four year period between those two games being released. You said about a lot of games, so it's all, it's all stepping stones. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. If you're the first to do it, it's, it's bound to get better. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still quite fancy this. Yeah. Yeah, but then I am a Saturn fancier. I do like the Saturn. Yeah. You know, I know it, it attributed a lot to Sega's downfall and mm -hmm. Sega's marketing techniques between the miscommunication between America Sega and Japan Sega. Um, you know, and but I, I feel that the Saturn holds a place for trying. You know, it tried its hardest. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it holds a place in my heart to be honest. I yeah. Mean, I've had a lot of fond memories playing the, the Saturn. Um, obviously, you know, my, my favourite games are the Virtual Fighters. Um, I was also partial to playing this game on a fancy little drive around. Um, you know, Alien Trilogy. Alien Trilogy? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I've, I've always, always loved the uh, Saturn. I've always been a, a fun favourite of it. But yeah, again, I'm a Sega man. You are a Sega man. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. It's very difficult, you know, to see what's, what's what yeah. with this. Um, I find the handling. I, I do kind of like it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of one-two step, isn't it? Yeah. I'd say going around corners in first person was the toughest. But no, you can't really argue with the, uh, the scenery at all, either of this. Yeah, Man's TT Superbikes, I think, took things to a better level. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think if they'd done Sega Rally 2 for the Saturn, that it would have taken the game engine from that game. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, like I said, I mean, it was, it was very weird that they would just do two choices. Because well, I tell you what, the graphics were remade for Saturn. You know, it didn't take a lot from the arcade version. They mm. rebuilt it for Saturn, and they used they didn't use the Sega graphics library for this game. That they basically rebuilt it to work on the Saturn console. Played it all free. I like the sort of the American rock they've got playing in it, just to appeal to Westerners. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> the Western people. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so you've got seven cars to beat now. It's done very well in the others. Medium right, maybe. Maybe. So when it comes to, uh, to arcade, Car games and uh, arcade shooting games. I always preferred it on the actual arcade themselves. Yes. Steering wheel, the gun. Yeah, the haptic feedback on the um, Saturn, uh, the arcade wheel versus yeah. the Saturn wheel was, um, you know, it goes leaps and bounds over oh, yeah, the, does, yeah. what you get here. Now, this, I think they sold 120,000 arcade units in this game. Oh, right. Which um, is, is quite impressive for the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were sort of. Almost in, I was in almost two months with uh, playing House of the Dead. Um, so when it comes to that, it's, it's definitely at the arcades with the actual gun itself. Yes, absolutely. See, I find it's too hard with the controller, um, even though it's a really ex excellent game on Saturn. Yeah, and to be honest, you can't play that game on modern TVs anyway. No. So it sort of rules out some of the Saturn's uh, arcade ports. Mm -hmm. I mean, House of the Dead was covered by Tantalus anyway, so it wasn't really a very good game. Right by the finish line. Time's up. They can carry on. Yeah, they can carry on. They're already on. That's fine. Okay, right, so going by what we've learned on this game, 
we're going to go through a few steak on this. Yeah, excellent. Game over, yeah. Game over, yeah. So graphically, why do you feel about this, Michael? Two minds sealed when I was a kid, thinking how excellent, excellent it was. And to now, where I'm thinking, so grainy. Yeah. So I think we're going to go half and half. With a little bit of generosity, so I'm going to go six. Six, yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to give it, because I know the Saturn's shortcomings, yeah. um, I'm going to give it, yeah, I'll go with you a six. Definitely. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, well, the sounds. It's nondescript. I'm not really getting anything from it. You got a little bit from the Western bit. Yeah. Four. Four. Hmm. Yeah, I'll go with that as well. It doesn't really jump out at you, does it? No, it doesn't. You know, the, the bit of piano going on the main menu there. So, yeah. yeah. What about controls? Controls? Um, I found that quite enjoyable, actually. I found it quite accessible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give that a bump up to a seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go for five, because it was very hard in first person. Okay. Excellent. Uh, all run gameplay? All run gameplay. Um, it gets a point. It doesn't... It's not going to get you to chew the fat. Um, it wants you to get right in there, it wants you to play. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's got a timer as well. It says, look, get in the game, enjoy it. This is an arcade game. You know, just appreciate what's there. So that's going to get a six from me. Six, okay. Um, I was actually thinking about um, doing, a, doing a better score on it, but it's two choice of cars. So yeah, I'm actually going to match you on that one. Six. Yeah. Um, right, so you are uh, going to be at six, up, right? And I am a six and a half. Six and a half, excellent. Okay, so that's a respectable score, all round. That's acceptable. Surprisingly. Yeah, Surprisingly. Acceptable. That's an acceptable game from us. Mm. Uh, now, where would you find this game today? What sort of price would you pay for this? Good question. Good question. I've seen it about, um, I, I think I saw it in CEX. Right, okay. Or five pounds, I think I saw it for. Five pounds in mm. CEX. Now, I believe that eBay, you can get this game for probably under that. Yeah. Yeah, you snipe a bit, you can probably get it for about one pound fifty, two pounds. Right, okay. Yeah, the Japanese version was probably a fiver. It's quite a while ago I saw it then. Yeah. To be honest, I haven't seen any Sega games in there since. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> rubbish. One pound fifty. Would you say that's oh, definitely worth it? Oh, well, one pound fifty. It. It's definitely worth it. If you've yeah. got a working Saturn console, Sega Rally should be in your collection anyway. Yeah, but yeah. if you if you're mental and don't have it in your collection, then um, yeah, add it to your collection for the piffling sum mm. of like one pound fifty. To be honest, I do like this case that he's had here. I usually like the, the big standard set of See, cases. I hate them. Really? I hate them. That's why I buy all those ones. No, I prefer the bigger ones. No. But on this one, I do prefer it. Um, it just looks a bit more crispy on this one. And the fact that you've got the you know, Sega Rally yeah, right on the yeah. inside of it, I love that. Sega Rally Championship Plus. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Very easy. So just to cover that again, the, we've got the version that is online. Um, the main difference is obviously between the normal release and this one is that this will have the, you know, the net link version. So. Hmm. Excellent. Play okay. Online. Right. Um, not bad score for that. To be honest, I thought it would have been a little bit lower being yeah, a racing yeah, game. Yeah, it's done right, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's her zone, so I, I definitely recommend that for your collection. Uh, so shall we go on to our uh, shout-outs? Yeah, okay. Um, Who have you got? I've got, for a bit of uh, YouTubing, I've got Dusty Joybags. I've got SPK Project, SPK Studios, of course. Yeah. Last Moment Victory, and Mikey's Vlog. Excellent. Um, who have I got? I've got um, personal shout-outs more than anything else. Personal shout-outs, yeah. John Robson. I've got Grant J.J. Morley. I've got Bob Phillips. Bob Phillips. Um, I've got Simone J. Strogan. Um, I've also got Christian Pease. I also have Stuart Sampson, who's recently been cotton on to our stuff, which we're looking at covering a game that you have requested within the next couple of episodes, mm -hmm. too. Um, you know, I've got Barry Powell as well, who's been giving us suggestions about games that he wants covered. Again, we're going to look into that. You know, in future episodes, we're going to be covering a game that you want. Um, people, Joe Hanny. 
Yeah, I've got uh, I've got Lee, I've got Ash, I've got Gaz, I've got Brian, I've got Seth. Can't remember his surnames, but uh, Seth Clooney. Seth, yeah. Seth Clooney. Mm. Back again, wow. No, yeah, always coming on our stuff. Yeah, what number one fan, number one fan. Cover a game viz at some point. Yeah, if he if he asks for it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, this, you know this. It's been an alright game. <laughs> Would you play it again? Yeah, that's what counts. One pound fifty. It's definitely worth it. Um, that was episode 34. 35 next time. Absolutely. Halfway you, through the 30s. If you liked what you saw today, uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel where you can watch the previous 34 episodes that we've done. Mm -hmm. Also, you can catch Retro Games Half Time, Two Grumpy 20 somethings as well. Yeah, it's always uh, hanging about. Yeah, he's always lingering around on YouTube in some corner. You know, dust it off, have a <laughs> listen. Always uh, pops up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can catch us on Facebook. You can uh, not being funny productions, MIC Films Entertainment, that's on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, you can catch us at Falls on uh, Mike Langbeer. And um, interact with us, tell us what you want, tell us things you don't like. We're not going to listen to things you don't like, but tell us things you do like, so yeah. Hi. Yeah, if, if you message me, I'll get back to you sometime this year. Um, you know, it's, it's always worth it. We might even, I might take it in, I might actually. You know, play a game that you actually suggest. Maybe. Who knows? And Maybe. if you get a hold of me, chances are I will latch on to you and be talking to you for the next 10 years. So, yeah, it's been 20 for me so far. Couldn't get away, could he? So, uh, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, that was episode 34 of the Two Grumpy Retro Gamers. Catch us on episode 35, where chances are we're going to be revisiting either the 16 bit generation, right? Or, alternatively, we might go really far back, who knows? Time travel with us, people. Wow. Through the retro gaming so, spectrum. That means we're going to do a retro game next time. We do a retro game every week. So, a retro game it is, episode 35. Check us then. See you next, See you next game. game.